Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk, and quick thing before I start this video, before anyone complains about this beard, I will be shaving, there's just one video that I need to record where I need to have this beard. So quite often, you hear a lot of flat earthers saying, well, the curve calculator doesn't actually take perspective into account, so it's wrong! <laughs> and whilst in the past, they may not have been entirely wrong in saying that, to make that statement is akin to me stating that the dashboard of my car does not have a little gauge to measure the current amount of horsepower. So therefore, it's a bad car, need to take it back to the manufacturers and force them to put a, you know, horsepower gauge on it. Am I ever going to use the horsepower gauge? Nah. But it'll look cool. I mean, there's the RPM gauge, which I barely use, so why would I need a horsepower gauge? It makes no sense, right? But back to the actual point. Even if all the curve calculators did include calculations for perspective, flat earthers wouldn't use them, would they? And it's not even exclusive to the flat earthers. I probably wouldn't even use the perspective calculations. But Flat Earthers are the ones that are demanding that the curve calculator must have perspective calculations. But here's the problem with it. Flat Earthers generally don't understand perspective. Flat Earthers have the same level of understanding of perspective that Deepak Chopra does of quantum physics. That is to say that they kind of know how it works, so they use that very little knowledge that they do have to validate the rest of their worldview. Then they go ahead to proclaim that they're an expert in it. Uh, if only there was a word to describe that. But anyway, to show this lack of understanding that Flat Earthers clearly have about perspective, while thinking that they know a lot about perspective, I'm going to use part of a comic thread that was left on my channel. Distance can't cause anything to happen. That's why it's not an independent variable. You can change your distance, but it won't physically cause anything to change. For example, if you move towards something, it appears to get bigger, but it hasn't actually gotten bigger. It's just perspective. Now, to give a bit of context on this, what I was asking beforehand was, why can't distance be an independent variable? I'd actually given an example. If I have a magnet and I want to measure how the attraction drops off as you get further away from it, I might have my independent variable be distance and I might have a uh, steel ball. As I move the steel ball away from the magnet, it should experience less attraction towards the magnet, thus being my dependent variable. Simple stuff, right? Well, I still don't know why distance can't be the independent variable in the experiment, but that has nothing to do with this video. It's just to give a bit of context. So if we completely ignore the independent variable part because he's wrong, and we talk about the example he gives, he's not really wrong in the example. If an object moves away from an observer, it's not actually getting smaller. It's just appearing to get smaller. Much like if I move away from my camera. I didn't actually get smaller then. I appeared to get smaller. There is no one in the globe earth community that would claim that the actual size of objects decreases as you move away from them. Unless I haven't heard of this idiot before. In which case, let me know. Uh, but would actually instead claim that the angular size decreases. Angular size is a different measurement to actual size, and angular size is just how big something looks, not how big it actually is. So I said to this guy that distance doesn't affect the actual size of the object, but instead affects the angular size of the object. Let's see how he responds. Well then dude, you've walked yourself into a little of a problem. A little of a pro yeah that's what I said. The problem is that if you want to say distance affects the angular size of things then that needs to be factored into the curve calculations. It isn't. According to the curve calculations things don't get smaller according to distance they just get obscured by earth curve. So this here is based on a misunderstanding and that misunderstanding is a flat earthers will often say oh things don't actually disappear over the horizon they just get too small to see. And when they're so small that you can't see it, obviously you can't see it. And that does make perfect logical sense. However, one of the premises is wrong. The premise that things don't disappear over the horizon. Because 
things can still disappear over the horizon even if some things get too small to see before they get to the horizon. But with larger objects, you can actually watch them go over the horizon. It's smaller objects that will become too small for the eye to resolve before they get to the horizon. And with smaller objects, if you have something to zoom up on them with, you can zoom up on them and actually watch them physically go over the horizon. But one of the main issues here is he says that the angular size of things needs to be factored into the curve calculations. Which would be very much like me saying that the speed of sound needs to be factored in when recording music. Sure, if you're dealing with a whole lot of mics, you will need to factor it in. But you don't need to do a whole lot of calculations with it, you just use simple rules like the 3 to 1 rule. And if you're recording something like a singer for example, the only difference that the speed of sound will make is with reverb. And you don't even need to really know the speed of sound to work out, am I going to get a good reverb if I place the mic here? So when it comes to the curve calculator, it really makes no difference if you know that, oh! This curve calculator says that two arc minutes of this thing are supposed to be visible. Because let me give you an example. Let's say that you are two meters tall and the object that you are trying to view is 20 kilometers away. And let's say that the object is 50 meters in height. The amount that will be hidden of that object in meters will be 17.544 meters. And the amount that would be hidden in arc minutes is about 3.0156 arc minutes. So a 50 meter object at a distance of 20 kilometers away would have an angular size of 8.5944 arc minutes. So now we can calculate the percentage of the object that should be hidden due to Earth's curve. And we can do this with either meters or angular size. And whether you use angular size or meters, the answer rounded to two decimal places is 35.09%. So if you were to go out and observe a 50 meter high object that was 20 kilometers away from you and 35% of that thing was hidden, then the earth curve is probably the thing that's hiding it. So regardless of whether you calculate the amount of the object that should be hidden using meters or using angular size, the same amount should be hidden, and there's actually a bit of an advantage to using meters because then you can take into account atmospheric refraction. If you're trying to calculate what you can see in the distance over water, then you definitely need to take perspective into account. If you hold up a coin, it can obscure the moon, but that doesn't mean the coin is bigger than the moon, obviously. Small things in the foreground can obscure things in the background, so as things get smaller with distance, this must be taken into account. But it isn't. Only a presupposed ball curve calculation is taken into account. Either way, you can't have distance as a cause of anything. It can't be an independent variable. If you change your aperture or camera or lens, you get different optical results. Things don't physically get smaller with distance. So yes, yeah, something like a wave, for example, could obscure something in the background. But if you're at a height of 2 meters, do you know how big a wave would have to be to obscure 2 meters on a flat earth? Take a guess. If your guess was 2 meters, then congratulations! You got it correct. You have won a thousand god points. Just remember that these god points are as valuable as a flat earther trying to calculate what they should see using the curve calculator, trying to work with angular size rather than meters. And if there's a shortage of god points, go talk to Godless Engineer. He should have some. Just let him know that I had a shortage of them. But yes, for an object like a wave, to obscure an object in the background on a flat earth, that object must be at least the height of the viewer, to obscure the same amount as the height of itself. And that is a law of, uh, what's that word, um, it, oh yeah, it's a law of perspective. So going back to the 50 meter high example at 20 kilometers, let's say that we're thinking, okay, 
waves might be able to obscure 2.67 arc minutes of this object. How do we prove that it's waves? Well, a good way for me would be to make the observation and see how steady does the horizon remain. Because if it's waves, waves tend to move around a lot. So if the horizon remains somewhat steady, then it's probably not waves. Another way would be to invest in a boat and go out to the sea and check the height of the waves. Because just say you take the observation at 5 meters high, and you still see that more than 5 meters of the building is being obscured. Okay, that means that the waves have to be at least 5 meters high. That's something that you would be able to be able to go out in a boat and check for. Uh, though that may be a bad idea seeing as if there's 5 meter waves, there's probably something seriously wrong with the seas or the lake or whatever it is that you're observing over. Hell, now that I think about it, you don't even need to take the observation at 5 meters. 2 meters are huge waves. I just hope that no one's making observations at 10 meters of height seeing more than 10 meters of an object disappear because that guy's probably fucked. That shit's about tsunami level. And another thing that I noticed at the end of the last comment that I read out, he said that things don't physically get smaller with distance and again, I'm not claiming that things physically get smaller. Learn the difference between angular size and actual size. But one thing that should be noted is that some of the calculations that I did for angular size, guess where they're from? And the correct answer is the Metabunk Kerr calculator. If you got that right, I'll give you 2000 god points. As it turns out, the Metabunk Curve Calculator does actually have perspective calculations on it. Apparently this was added recently because Mick West was spurred on by Rory's quote, angular shenanigans. Now I do know that there is a topic going around about Rory possibly owing someone £5,000, but I can see both sides of the issue here. So I think that Rory's challenge was to prove that curve calculators do not account for perspective. And in a way I can see where Rory is coming from on this. Because if you do the calculations using angular size rather than meters like a lot of the curve calculators do, you get the same result anyway. So by default that could be considered accounting for perspective. But in a flat earth sense, you may think, oh, they're not actually doing the angular size calculations, so it's not actually accounting for perspective. So that's my take on it. And, you know, it is Rory's challenge, so maybe there's something in there that maybe I haven't considered, you know, and that's why uh, people haven't been paid £5,000, because they haven't actually debunked what Rory wanted them to debunk. So, you know... Or maybe he has um, paid someone £5,000. I haven't been keeping up with all of Rory's shenanigans, or angular shenanigans as Mick West likes to call it. <laughs> and Rory, if you happen to be watching this, and you want to leave a comment detailing your challenge, feel free to do so, I might even pin it. But anyway, leave a like and subscribe if you like this video. Leave a comment letting me know what you'd like me to make a debunking video of in the future, or something like that, I don't know. But as always, a big shout out to my $20 patron, What Jesus. If you want to support me financially, you can do so on Patreon. Link will be in the description. But anyway, I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching.